you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are our protection and our hope and our promise. We thank you for salvation. We thank you that you have saved us and redeemed us to do good. Bring blessing, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So good morning, all. Welcome. So just to give you some backstory on all this, um, the Psalms aren't written necessarily in chronological order, which makes us crazy because we like we like things to be in a um, which makes us crazy because we like we like things to be like we like to think about them. This is the time in David's life where Saul is afraid of him and angry with him and is chasing them around, and it's the time in in Jewish history where Saul is king, and David is anointed to be king, but hasn't taken over the kingdom yet, and has attracted a, a band of sometimes misfits, and sometimes people who are being persecuted wrongly. Uh, we think about Robin Hood out there in the woods with all this. But, uh, so, so David is a man of war. He understands war. Um, and he also is kind of hampered because he can't really raise his hand against Saul, God's king, even though God, even though Saul has drifted to a place of being uh, not only annoying, but dangerous. Call him a so, psychopath. <laughs> uh, so Saul's a psychopath chasing David, and David really can't kill him because because he's still king. Still, David king. honors the kingdom. Uh, so, so this is a place where where David's hiding here, and like Mike said, he's in these caves over here. But he keeps his band of merry men moving because there's a there's a reward out for him. Tell us yeah. where David is, and you know, or I don't know if there's a reward, but there's either a promise or a curse on you if you don't if you don't take Saul's side against David. Yeah, we've already seen Doeg, and and we already know there's many people who want the money for yeah, that's right. or the fame or whatever reason there, there they're, they're out. So that's the backstory of this. And 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 for me, not being a musician, but understanding a little about worship, it's amazing that David wants all of these traumas in song. Mm. So, mm. so from a choir director. For the choir director, a song of David regarding the Zephites came and said to Saul, we know where David's hiding, and to be accompanied by string music. So every time, so the advantage of having a, a 600-man army rather than a massive is you can move them pretty quick. When you, okay, the enemy's coming, zip out the back door or around the corner or whatever. And these aren't, um, you know, you, you can run... 600 guys but with a whole army you kind of got to march them and stuff and so so here is david in in trouble and god is his strength and god is his hope and god is his salvation but but these armies are coming against him so he doesn't just pray but he sometimes he sometimes he obviously prays he sings and then he and then he attacks where god tells him to attack and doesn't attack where God tells him not to attack, and runs when it's time to run. Um, it's it's really what we would call a guerrilla campaign, that you can't fight him, uh, my 600 guys against your army, so we'll see, oh God. So that leads us to, and, and when we go to 1 Samuel 13, we see that he's, he's praying, God, should I attack these guys? Yep. Should I attack these guys? Nope. Uh, so... So the, the hand of God Almighty is on him, and he is anointed to be king, but he is not king. He is in a place of great uh, stress. Yeah. Yeah, really. That uh, Yeah, when you think about <laughs> that anointed, it goes all the way back. Uh, that um, he would uh, now be in a situation where um, he is uh, really in a pressure cooker. I mean, it's just heat from all sides. He's going up against the, the king of Israel, the, you know, that the, the had that whole, um, he, and he wanted to preserve, of course, he didn't want to attack Saul simply because he held the office. I mean, he, he respected the office, so to speak. Yeah, but yeah. Um, he was the guy that uh, 
was anointed from uh, uh, early on from his boyhood, from his boyhood. So, uh, so now he's got these people that are aligning, uh, are uh, aligning against him, aligning with him. So, I mean, the whole point is, try, I'm trying to get the context of where these this ver this psalm is coming from. This this prayer that we're about to hear. Amen. Yeah. Psalm 54, verse 1. Uh, this is uh, NLT. Come with great power, O God, and rescue me. Demen defend me with your might. Amen. Good morning, Linda. Good morning. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, whoever else is with us. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, guys. So, so we find... That he's got an army of 600 guys. You go, whoa, I got all these guys. But God, but God is his source. Mm. Come with me with great power and rescue me. Defend yep. me with your might. Yep. So we come to a place that we don't have the resources or the intellect or the whatever to, to fight this battle. And we go, God, fight the battle. Now, as we get, if we get good at this, we start the day with God fight the battle, not, okay, God, I can take care of this. You just chill back. No, that always gets you in trouble. Yeah. Come with yeah. me with great power and rescue me. So, yeah. so, yeah. so the rumor is that the, that he has been betrayed again about where his, where his hideout is. Uh, and he knows that Saul hates him and he knows he knows that he is anointed to be king, yeah. but he's still got to live today to get to tomorrow. He knows yeah. that he's a, that Saul's a nut too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And now he's, let's get down to two. Over his head. Yeah. So we can see he's in over his head. It really feels like he's overwhelmed. You see a quicksand over your head, reaching up, and all you got is your hand out, hoping somebody throws you a rope. Yeah. yeah. Listen to my prayer, verse two. Oh God. Pay attention to my plea. For strangers yeah, it's are attacking kind of a me. weird thing here. It's kind of a weird thing to ask God to listen to your prayer because we know that He hears the prayers of the righteous. But, but for your own good, God, pay attention to me. I mean, that's not that's not a prayer of lack of faith. That's a a prayer of desperation. God, yeah. please listen to me. Please pay attention to my prayer. Please, God. He know uh, what he knows where to go when the yeah, when right. the when yeah. the yeah. Know, it's when almost the it's stop. almost at a point of hysterical. That's right. Yeah. Uh verse yeah. Three. Pay attention to my plea. Verse three, for strangers are attacking me. Violent people are trying to kill me. They care nothing for God. So not only is Saul and Saul's army chasing him. But David has six guys, 600 guys wandering in a land that is occupied by other peoples. And sometimes they're betraying him and sometimes they're chasing him and sometimes they're defending themselves from him. Yeah. So it's not just uh, the, the people of Saul that are attacking him. He's getting attacked all over and violent people are trying to kill me and they care nothing for God. Yeah. So it's interesting uh, the use of the word strangers. He yep. knows who's attacking him. It's Saul and his company, and the people from Ziphites are his neighbors back back in the land of uh, Judah. Right. So yeah. he knows, them, but, they, but they're acting like total strangers. They're acting the opposite of what uh, familiar people, friends, colleagues, uh, fellow Israelites should be doing. So they're acting like strangers. So he's calling them. So this is strange. Why you know attacking me? And they're violent about it. They're not just uh, they're not just bad mouthing me. They're they're coming at me with uh, real live arrows, so to speak. Is there money on his head? Uh, there's a well. There's a challenge on his head to to honor from Saul's point of view. Are you going to honor Saul or are you going to honor oh, David? And then and we just saw that Saul just killed off. 84 priests for not yeah. following him. So yeah. whether or not it's money or fear. Okay, right. and then interlude, think about it, Selah, uh, pause on this. And if you're musical, uh, there's a rest here before the next beat. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, again, the, um, they care nothing for God. They, I'm praying to you. I believe in you. I trust in you. 
they don't. They just they're just doing their their violent thing, because um, yes. that's uh, that's all they respond to. Yeah. Verse okay. four. But God is my helper; the Lord keeps me alive. Hmm. Okay, this is a res the counterpart to they care nothing for me. They don't care. I care. God is my help. God keeps me alive. May the evil plans of my enemies be turned against them. This is this goes back to the to I believe the proverbs. Let the let the curse return to its source. Yep. I believe it says, "Do as you promised and put an end to them, to the end end to the plans and to the people." That that's I don't know. What do you think? I think both things work. Often, okay. often you you get a plan and you know how you're going to do something, and then if it's evil, God turns it around and and it boomerangs back on you, like Rich yeah. just quoted the proverb. Yeah. So you think, so David understands this, <laughs> like you make plans as an army, you make plans, and then but God turn it on, and also um, the Lord God Almighty has has allowed. Uh, quote prophets to come out with some sort of evil plan that that is uh, that is disastrous. So you, oh God, you know, turn their plan against them, uh, turn their actions against them, put an end to them. Do mm -hmm. as you promised. So yeah, that's at, right. At some point, um, we know that David had a relationship with the Lord, and, Amen. and he's relatively young at considering yep. at this time yep. um, but he had a relationship with the Lord unlike even a lot of us today I mean <laughs> he really he, he did you know and he knew where to run when things got going you yeah. know yeah. and now six verse six I will sacrifice a voluntary offering to you I will praise your name O Lord for it is good Amen. Okay, so um, we we kind of kind of weird for our culture, but for the Jewish culture, it wasn't uncommon to give a voluntary offering to say thank you to God. Right. It kind of makes sense. It, publicly, we testify God is good. He did this for me and this for me. Um, yeah. But it. it it's rare for us to say God is good. I'm going to put an extra amount in the offering. Um, we could do that and 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 don't and be just and be obedient if God calls you to put an extra amount in the offering or whatever. But in the in the in the culture of the law, you didn't just say thank you to God. You gave a gift to to God, a voluntary offering. And I will praise your name for it is good. So here's David being chased and abused and then sometimes these guys are hungry and i'll praise your name oh god for it is good how uh how different that is than some who don't praise his name at all but just growl and curse him yeah, you know, Maybe. yeah. in the new testament we sometimes uh, think in terms of um fasting yes yeah. As to sacrifice the kind of sacrifice we give we give a sacrifice of praise yeah, there's, and, there's many forms of sacrifice. Yeah. It, yeah, it may be giving your neighbor or driving the church van. It yeah. may be getting someone to a doctor's appointment. It may be a sacrifice of your time, a sacrifice of your praise, a sacrifice of your strength, a sacrifice of your money. Yeah. There's there's other ways of sacrifice. If the Lord leads. Yeah. yeah. Then you probably should do it. You know? <laughs> but you have restored me from my troubles and helped me to triumph over my enemies. So so seven is a mindset thing. Has David's has David's situation changed between verse one and verse seven? No. Has David changed between verse one and verse seven? Absolutely. Because you've rescued me from my troubles. You helped me to triumph over my enemies in in faith and this isn't just st stupid spoken faith this is i mean the the faith people say 
If I say it, God Almighty, the creator of the universe, has to do it and has to do it now, and that is so offensive to me, it makes me cuckoo. Yeah. But this is <laughs> but this is David has a vision. Okay, I'm in God's presence. I'm going to do what he's called me to do, and you have triumphed over my enemies. He's it talking is, it out in his mind. Like he might be even talking it out to himself. That's right. But he has but yeah. he has the Holy Spirit leading him yeah. into the end of the sentence. So prayer doesn't change God. Prayer changes us. Amen. And prayer makes us a conduit of what God wants to do and who God's care. God's character never changes. Right. But prayer changes us also by the way difficult situations change us yeah <laughs> so between one and seven here the heart of david has gone from fearful to confident yeah that mm. the, that his that he, he's way beyond his skill set he doesn't have enough guys to fight all those guys he doesn't have but he uh, i'm now in the presence of god and he alone can take care of me and he will God said it, okay? He knows that. Yeah. And he knows it's going to... He God, He was promised as a child he was going to be king. That's right. He knew it was going to happen. I know Pastor Perry, he said the same thing that I've said, that it comes a time in our lives sometimes when he said the same thing I have said, which is Romans 8, 28. It all works. Lord, I know that everything here is going to work out. I'm having a hard time here, but I know everything is going to work out because I love you, Lord, and I'm called according to your purpose. And right. sometimes you got to talk it over and put your faith <laughs> in God and say, okay, yes, look. Amen. Know, so, yeah. yeah. So we have, we have an amazing little Psalm here. You would think, okay, I could get this through this Psalm in a minute. Uh, and actually you could probably read it in a minute, but that's not what this is. This is watching the heart of a man of God who cries out to God, Amen. gets filled with the Spirit, and knows that God will have his way. Amen. Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us again and again and again with your Spirit. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Thank you, Father, for this psalm today. And I ask that you help me to turn things over to you, Lord, and that you be, be with me this day. Help me to be influenced on others, Lord, and to share your gospel with whoever you put in my tracks. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, thank you again. For all of these recordings, all of these uh, incidences captured in song, uh, in psalms, some of them sent to music. It's amazing. All of these uh, uh, scenarios that that we face, uh, the uh, idea of being overwhelmed by our problems, and yet reaching out and realizing that you're there, and that uh, we can in you always find hope and uh, realize that you are, because you've overcome, we we can as well. And we ask, Lord, that you give us the faith to stick with you, to follow your leading, to look for it, that we might lead paths that glorify you in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Have a blessed day. All. Blessings, everybody. Bye. By the way, uh, wherever the mic is set there, are you there? I'm coming back to you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, wherever the mic is set today, I mean, you and Mike were very even in the audio. I mean, both uh, virtually the same strength. It looks like it's a little bit 